Hey, no Modestus, how are we doing? Yeah, doing really well, thank you. Uh, enjoying the fruits of victory, but at the same time, ready to get back into it, ready to uh, get in another tear-up. So, yeah, yeah, man, I think when, when, when you have that one fight, uh, especially in the UFC, you just want to do it again. Like, we've got a short career, you know. I know I say short, like 10 years or whatever, but I just can't wait to do it again, man. Yeah, yeah, I bet. So, uh, how did you find the Fight Island, Island experience? Absolutely superb. I mean, look, I'm, I'm repping, repping all the time now, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, honestly, it, it, they done everything so well. Like, they, everything that they had organised from the quarantine, I mean, the quarantine was a bit long, but I mean, listen, at the end of the day, that was never going to be like, the, you know, the best part of the uh, experience sort of thing. Um, whenever we got into Abu Dhabi, um, and I was quarantining, I, at least I was with my dad so we could still train in the room and stuff like that for those two days that we were there. Yeah. But uh, everything they'd done was organised absolutely amazingly. Uh, like I said, everything was done to make sure that everyone was safe. All the COVID was all done properly. They even had like, you know, they had people wearing, you had to wear face masks once you left your room and stuff like that. But the whole fight out experience was absolutely spectacular. I mean, listen, to, to go out to Abu Dhabi, I mean, it was lovely. It was 40 degrees, but oh my gosh, I went to that cage, that be- that, that cage on the beach for one day and we're like, oh, it's only one and a half miles away from the hotel. We'll walk it. Never again. On the way back, we, we got the coach. We were like, there, there's no way we could, we could do this. Like, walking out in that heat was crazy. But, I mean, like, listen, the, the, the beach itself and, like, the cage, it's funny. Everyone, everyone was, you know, there's a lot of speculation. Oh, yeah, well, are they going to be fighting in a cage on the beach and, and all that? But, mate, no, number one, no way in hell in that weather. And uh, num- number two, like, it was literally just for show. It was, uh, uh, like, a wood with just a piece of, like, sort of blanket, like a blanketed, uh, like, sort of poster over it. So it mm-hmm. wasn't necessarily, like, actual canvas, which is, like, you know, bouncy or whatever. But yeah. it was amazing, obviously, just to be there and stuff like that and experience it. The water was really warm in the ocean and stuff like that. Like, it was almost like a hot bath. But... Uh, to be honest, after, you know, I sort of, um, we did that for one day. That was like the, the extent of the excursions that we've done. Like there was more stuff, but obviously I was just, like, I was very focused on the fight and I was focused on recovery for my knee as well. So that was sort of played a bit more attention in terms of what I'm sort of doing in the day outside of it. But mate, like from the UFC Performance Institute, um, you know, sorting out your meals like with your with your nutrition to the to the physios and and everything it is like taking care of the athletes on another level. It makes you feel like you're a professional, like a proper professional athlete. Like I'm pretty sure NFL and NBA players get exactly the same treatment. They treat us like we're you know like like we're at the pinnacle of importance, which is mad because you literally do not get that anywhere else. And like, I've got to give them massive credit for them to pull off such an amazing, an amazing event with all the protocols put into place properly. Like they'd done it properly. They didn't, they didn't do it like, Oh yeah, we'll, we'll just try it and we'll run a show. They are doing it with everything in mind. So mate, if that will give you an idea as to what fight islands like, it is spectacular. And honestly, can't wait to go back there again. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that they should be going back there in October, so that would be a, a nice one to get back onto. But That's yeah, it. I've seen I've seen all the pictures. They do do everything completely, like everything's on board. No cutting corners, nothing. It is it's very good to feel safe and good in that environment. Yeah, feeling safe and at the same time feeling like they're uh, they're they're putting you, like I say, at the at the centre of attention and like you know you feel like important. You feel like they're doing everything they can to help you it's absolutely mm-hmm. amazing like i said second to none ufc that's why they're the top promotion in the world yeah. so obviously you mentioned a bit about your knee we'll get into that a bit later but you're saying you didn't get to do any of the um other stuff like uh the formula one cars and all that stuff no well it's funny because <laughs> my uh uh my uh one of my coaches danny batten shout out to him he uh he actually uh, was meeting a friend that he known off of a pod. Or I think I've trained with him as well, actually. I've seen him at the gym in Northampton and like he was out there like, you know, sort of just doing all the stuff. And then mm-hmm. Danny came, went to meet him one day and then he was like, oh, do you want to do like some Formula One drive? Do you want to do some driving on the on the racetrack? Do you want to do some bikes? So Danny actually got a little bit of a taste of all that stuff, but uh, which I'm happy that he got to do because bloody hell, if you're in Abu Dhabi, you might as well. But yeah. I think um, like I would have liked to have done it, but at the same time, 
I was, like I said, I was focused and mm. it, it, you're, you're sort of, I wanted to just conserve my energy. Do you know what I mean? Like I would have, if it would have been a case of, oh yeah, like, you know, I, I'll, I'll sort of, I'm over there for holiday or whatever. Or I'm there mm-hmm. after the fight or they, they like, if they wouldn't have, you know, made us fly out straight away, then I would have been like, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll go and try it. Cause I'm a bit more relaxed in the mind, but mm-hmm. you know, I know some other fighters like to do stuff to sort of like, you know, but I don't know. I, I like, I like being in, in sort of fight, like, you know, even just chilling, like walk around the hotel and be able to just go to a restaurant and chill with your, uh, with, with, with your coaches. I think that's sort of good enough in terms of being able to relax. But, uh, yeah, but I, I was glad that Danny got to do it and he said it was a once-in-a-lifetime a sort of opportunity. So definitely when we go out there, might want to try and sneak in there and try and get one of those. Yeah, yeah, I definitely understand the, the fact of like not doing it and trying to stay focused because obviously it's hard enough going there anyway and adjusting to the time zone because obviously he was fighting early in the morning as well. So uh, what, was, what was it like? Sorry, Karen. Yeah, sorry. I, I was just going to uh, talk about that point about the time zone yeah. and stuff like that. They're only three hours ahead, but obviously we were fighting at like four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. To be honest, I know a lot of fighters said, oh, you know, you have to sort of climatize, you have to get used to it. But I don't know if it's just me or like maybe because my dad likes waking up early and I, maybe I've inherited that from him. But when I like, sl- I just slept quite normally. I didn't really have to do anything properly to like adjust like in fight week. Do you know what I mean? Like I didn't yeah. have to, all right, we're going to wake up at a certain time this time, blah, blah, blah. We just trained at the same time every day. And my body just naturally got used to just wait, wait, uh, you know, being ready at that time, which was about 4.30 in the morning. And, you know, even the night before you're, you're sort of everything like in terms of your rehydration and your, your, your stuff like that. And you're going through the whole day. It's like, it's a little bit different. So, I, yeah, I, I didn't really find, like, me, when I woke up, I felt like, I actually felt more rested, more, like, uh, alert than I would be for a normal fight. That's, at, like, 10, 11 o'clock in the evening, which is mad. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah I, it climatized. I, thought, I felt like I, uh, I felt like I adjusted to it quite, quite easy. Like, the transition wasn't as, as severe as maybe some of the other fighters might have felt. Yeah. Um, one thing I did hear about, like some fighters were saying, I think it was Paige Van Sant, she was getting woken up at all times of the day by your cider and whatever else. Was there any problems like that for you? Because I know uh, that- I don't have. Yeah, I, I didn't have any problems like that. Um, I feel like maybe the American fighters are under tighter scrutiny than than the European fighters, uh, mm-hmm. especially just because your cider is more readily available in in the US than 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 here and. Uh, you know, like I've had, I've had a test done and, 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 and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, it is a bit annoying. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I can, I can imagine for them. Uh, I haven't, haven't had it done personally to myself, but yeah, I can imagine it's, it's, it's a bit of like, come on now, I'm on the island. Like there's, do you know what I mean? There, there's yeah. seriously nothing like, but yeah, it's, it's part of protocol. It's what's keeping our sport clean. I'm very happy for it. I'm happy that they're doing it. Like, do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, in in a case I'm I'm actually sort of willing and like I'm open to like test me like do it because you know you, you sort of you want to you want to be part of that whole sort of uh, situation and scenario of you know being under a clean and good sport and a pure sport and and I love it but yeah I can understand yeah when you're trying to sleep or trying to get a use of the time in t- in terms of when you're going to fight and stuff like that and they 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 rock up at like you know two o'clock in the morning when you're trying to you know trying to get ready or whatever is a bit mm-hmm. annoying but again I, I guess that's just part of the game you know what i mean yeah definitely i was going to say um it, i was always wondering i've seen people on stories and that, that they were right next to the track i think the track goes through the hotel doesn't it i was wondering if uh, ever- yeah like there there was like a yeah so they have like this uh bridge bit and so there's like a I don't know, like a like a little river, a lake, or something that goes through <laughs> it. And then they had like, yeah, the track was right next to my room. So obviously, when the cars were racing, you can hear everything—the drifting, yeah. the acceleration of the cars. Like, uh, it was it was mad. Uh, but it was cool. it was like like I said, it was really cool. Like literally, you just sit on the balcony. It's right there. I'm not gonna lie to you though. I could not sit on the balcony for more than like 20 minutes without sweating profusely. So <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, uh, but mate, five star hotel, freaking room service. It was like insane. Like I said, they took care of us like next level. And I've never really, I've never used room service before. So even that was quite a, uh, 
uh, quite a, you know, unusual but spectacular thing that I was able to utilize. I mean, most people are like, yeah, like they'll be talking about, oh yeah, I've got to do this and that. And I'm like, well, room service was pretty decent to me. So <laughs> I'll tell you that, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so um, we talk a bit about your fight now. You was originally meant to be fighting somebody else and obviously he tested positive for coronavirus. So you had, you was left without opponent for a bit. What was you um what was you feeling when you found out your opponent was tested positive? Um I knew I'd get an opponent. This is the thing, yeah, this yeah. is the UFC. They they people are jumping at the gut. I was just interested to know who it would be. That's the thing. That's all I wanted to know. I was like, mm, who are they possibly gonna give me now? But I was I knew I'd get an, an opponent and I was ready to go. When he when he, you know, when he had to be pulled out, like I said, I had no doubt in my mind that you, UFC are are known. To, 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 to get fight you know they're known to have loads of pull out they've had loads of pull outs and stuff like that maybe some of the high level fighters they you know uh, or the guys who are up, higher up in the rankings or, or whatever they, they may have chose strategically not to take certain fights or or whatever if someone put, tested positive but for me I'm trying to work my way up the ladder whoever they give me mm -hmm. I've got to go and, and, and do the business I've been training for so long do you know what I mean um, it, it was funny because it, it was during that week when my knee was really bad that I found out that uh, my opponent pulled out, but it didn't falter me in any way in terms of, uh, you know, having a decreased mindset or, you know, being like I knew and already fun enough within 24 hours, I had an opponent. So, uh, and then it just, and the thing is all the stuff that I've been practicing for Vinicius, so I knew would work against any other opponent I would have. It would just be a case of maybe their skill levels were a little bit better in certain areas or, you know, but at the end of the day, the, the stuff that I did defensively to work with the grappling would have worked against any opponent. So it, it was a case of just transferring it from the style that I had to work with before into a new style. It's all part of martial arts, adapting and overcoming. Bruce Lee says it best. So mm -hmm. uh, that was just, it was always part of my, you know, in part of my, my, my mantra just to be like, I've got to go in and, and beat whoever. It's my UFC debut at the end of the day. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it, like it's, it's a big deal finally getting on that stage so mm -hmm. uh, like I said I was ready to perform no matter what yeah so you, like you say you eventually got your opponent and then um, you went in there you finished it in the in the first round but it was a bit of a, a weird stoppage obviously at the end of the round the, the the horn went and the referee was still taking a close look what were you thinking when he was when obviously the bell went I uh, knew I landed <laughs> some devastating strikes like literally every single spot was this is the thing that the, like when people talk about controversy this and oh yeah it was a bit of a weird stoppage and this and that and i'm just like there's nothing weird about it when a guy's trying to take you down and you're clobbering uh, elbows into the side of the head where it's the perfect spot up we went through it in the changing room beforehand where all the uh, legal shots were you even mm -hmm. see on the video i can even get a screenshot and do you know what i mean yeah so, you know what I mean? It was all like clearly legal shots. It was like, it was all, uh, everyone, you know, for some of them were saying back of the head, this and that. And then they're like, oh yeah. And there was all this uh, emphasis on this bloody door opening and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I'm just like, you're not looking at it in, 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 the, in the respect that, listen, the guy could not stand up. He got asked four or five times by the referee to stand up and go to his corner. He could not do so. The mm -hmm. fact that you have to lean against the cage or whatever to get you suffering, he would have been sitting there on the floor anyways, not being able to get up or being shaky on his feet. The referee would have stopped it even if the door was closed. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? They're trying to get the coaches in because it's the end of the round. So mm -hmm. if you're sitting around, like, you know, at the end of the day, that, that's, a, that's a clear indication that you shouldn't, you know. But I've got to give massive credit, obviously, to uh, Andreas Michalidis. Uh, had his wedding the other day. Obviously, congrats to him. Uh, I mean, listen, he, he, he went in there and, you know, he fought his heart out. Now he gets to fight at his, uh, at his normal weight class of middleweight as well because he had to move up to fight me. Um, but, yeah, like, like, like I say, when, when the fight, when I landed those elbows, I knew I landed some, some hard shots because mm -hmm. the first one I landed, he already dropped to his knees. So I knew if I land a couple more of these, he's going to be pretty dazed. Mm -hmm. um, I could have probably, like, the thing is, when he went for the shot for the takedown, I had the overhook and the underhook. I was ready to defend the takedown. Do you know what I mean? I've been working on it so much. I'm like, I can defend this takedown and go to the second round. Obviously, my knee was starting to swell up a lot. Like, normally, if I got kicked like that, my knee wouldn't swell up that bad. But because mm -hmm. of my, you know, having to deal with something before the fight, it swelled up a little bit more than usual. I'm like, and my dad, literally, for 10 seconds, I can either go into the next round. And, and I was thinking to myself, I'm going to really put it on him now in this, in this second round and let the kicks fly. Or I can try and finish it now. I got, you know, I got. I didn't know how long I had left. I just went with Elbers until the referee told me to stop. 
uh, the same like my last fight. And then, uh, you know, when you look days on the floor, I thought, okay, well, I think this may go into the second round. Do you know what I mean? Like, in my head, I was like, he's days, but I thought he would probably stand up, and but he just wasn't standing up. And then as the time went on, like, it became like five seconds, six seconds, like, the time was ticking away. I was like, he's not standing up. Like, and then as soon as he called the fight, you know, it, it was, it was, it was very good refereeing by Dan Moverheady. I have to admit, he was so um, confident with, 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 with his refereeing and he knew exactly, like, do you know what I mean? He imposed his, um, his authority, which I loved. Like, he says, I don't need to look at any replays. I know what happened. I was right there. And he was literally right there next to the action, watching it himself in the best view possible. So, it, it was very good, a very good job by him. I have to, uh, I have to admit as well. And like I said, he he saw he saw that uh, Michaelidis was you know dazed and couldn't get stand up to his feet. So it was a good stoppage because even when they bought the stool for him to sit down, he still was a bit shaken and and didn't know what was going on. So at the end of the day, man, uh, everything that happened with that fight, you know, being weird or whatever, it's just because it happened at the end of the round. What if that would have happened in the middle of the like? Imagine if that would have happened with you know a minute left. There would be no controversy. Do you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I probably would have landed the elbows, pushed them off, pushed them off, and landed ground upon, and it would have been the end of the fight, anyways. So, no, no matter what, like you know, like all, all this stuff, I think it's just because it happened at the end of the round, and 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 this and that, and people like you know. But it's good. Look, at the end of the day, I was glad that people were talking about it and trying to figure out what went on because it just brings mm-hmm. more attention to me. And at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Whether you love it or hate, hate it, good or bad, uh, publicity is, is, is publicity and it's getting more attention for me on my next fight. Whether you hate me or, or you, you think my performance is amazing, you're going to want to watch me, either for me to win or lose. So uh, that, it, it was all in all, it was a good thing. And like I said, when I looked at it back and my, my coaches looked at it, they said, you had a good performance, Modestus. Listen, you had to go in there with, with, with your knee being swollen and, and stuff like that. So obviously it was going to make me a little bit more, more sort of hesitant with stuff. But at the end of the day, I got to feel the cage. I've got a Bruce Buffer, you know, screaming Baltic Gladiator, you know, and stuff like that. And it was just, yeah, like I said, it, it, it felt like, it, you know, like I say, it was where I was meant to be. So, so um, with the um, going into the fight, how was everything with training and everything? Because obviously you just you've mentioned your knee and that was that was flaring up, um, and then obviously coronavirus, everything. Like, first, obviously explain your knee and what what happened with your knee. Yeah, so I mean, listen, training actually went absolutely amazing. It, it couldn't have gone any better. Like I just, I, I mean, everything was a little bit like it, it went a little bit rushed towards the end of the camp because I only had about three weeks two weeks really to train with my jiu-jitsu guys to really like sort but they helped me so much and shout out ed ingamels and thomas reynolds they've done an amazing job to sort of help me big 110 kilo guys you know doing the jiu-jitsu stuff with me that they they really helped out a lot and i really appreciate it and like my, like i had a, had a uh, a big uh, like a really good wrestler uh train with me i had all my training with my dad like i had guys come to my gym then northampton started and open up so realistically i got absolutely amazing training like like I got really good, really good looks. I was really very well prepared for, for for that opponent, and then it was just a very, like I said, it was a bit of. A, I felt in like the best shape possible, like cardio, uh, even in my body and stuff like that. Like I, mm-hmm. I, I didn't have to cut weight at all, really. Uh, but one thing and strength and conditioning went absolutely so everything like clicked on on like levels where you know it, it was amazing, but. With two weeks before the fight, like literally my knee swelled up like a watermelon. Like it was, like it was bad. Like, and that sort of, it, it never put that in my mind that I'll make it to the fight. It was just like, well, now I've got to take about four days off. I can't train. I can't get, you know, luckily my weight wasn't too high anyway. So weight management wasn't much of an issue. But, you know, when you got that, and sort of you have to rest it and it's just sort of the swelling goes down and it goes up and it goes, do you know what I mean? It was, mm-hmm. just, it was just a bit of a, it was a bit of an, it was more of an annoying thing. And then when I flew, it, it swelled up massive again when I got out to fight Island. So uh, it, it was basically, they diagnosed it as bursitis, which is basically an inflama- inflammation of the shock absorber on your knee. And it's just from my mate, I might, I might banged it in training one day and then like, you know, uh, I'm like the constant rubbing on the floor and the jiu-jitsu and it just blew up. And then, uh, yeah, like I say, I had to, I had to ch- change everything in my training in the last two weeks. L- I was lucky again that 
all the hard work had already been done. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I had like an amazing, however many weeks preparing. I've been training hard since January. So I've been like always training, mm-hmm. always being in shape, always being ready. And then, um, and then, yeah, like I say, it was just fine tuning stuff, for, like, you know, sort of more, uh, more for the opponent and, um, and stuff like that. So really most of the hard work was done. It was just a case of like just keeping the moves and stuff like that. And then as my knee got better, then start adding the strikes and the pad work in. And it was just very hard because I couldn't drill the, uh, the wrestling and the jiu-jitsu stuff with much intensity or uh, like sharpness because I had to be wary of my knee. So, uh, but I could still go through the techniques and, you know, I could still visualize. So everything in that sense went good. Um, so, I mean, the, like, like I said, preparation went amazing. Uh, it was just that, that last bit that was like, you, you just had to adapt. You have to, you have to overcome the situation. I feel like, you know, I have this track record of doing something to my knee bloody hell before a fight. I don't know what, like, what's going on. I had it in my last one as well. But, you know, I have an amazing physio as well. Shout out to Leanne at Distinct Physiotherapy. If you're in the St. Albans area, go and check her out. Absolutely amazing. Literally called her straight away, got on it, you know, uh, got the pictures, saw she 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 treated me as well and like even the ufc performance institute the whole week that i was there every day they looked at my knee and they got me sorted so you know that that everything they did the best that they could to get it to the best that it could get do you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and i was lucky it went from about 40 percent and hurting to about at least 70 percent which was 70 80 percent which is more than what i could have asked for do you know what i mean in terms of doing it in such a short space if that happened four or five weeks out then no big deal but it happened two weeks out so it was like you know it's just it was a bit of a rush for recovery almost i'm like fine i just want this to, to heal up you know i wanted to go even now it's it's swollen but it, it, you can tell it's going down but as well when i was out in the uh on the island um, I had like an ingrown, I don't know if it was because of the ingrown hair or because I know bur- bursters are quite susceptible to infection, but uh, I think it was infected from what the physio told me because I've started feeling shivers for like two days and it, it, luckily it went away and my body responded, but I was like, this is not good. Like I'm, I'm not supposed to be feeling like this. And then luckily by the time I got to the fight, I like, literally just the day before I was like, okay, I, I feel fine. I don't, I don't have this, this problem no more. So Again, man, it was a lot of stuff that I had to deal with, but at the end of the day, I still went in there and got uh, got the job done, and I did everything that I could. But it's because I had such amazing people around me that I was able to get fit enough to go into the fight and, and do the business. Because I, I saw, like, literally when I was doing the UFC photos, everyone's like, hey, "Is your knee all right? Like, what's going on?" And I'm just like, I'm just like ignoring everyone because I'm like, I'm not going to say nothing. My knee is fine. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that was that was the thought in my head when I, my thought process when I was going out there. So. um yeah, man, it was a crazy experience, but I'm glad I did it because now not only does it show that, you know, nothing, you know, like, you know, these things don't break me, but it, it gives me more confidence in my abilities and my skill set because when I'm firing all cylinders, I know, I know I can do a lot of damage. So, yeah. So, uh, obviously with your knee and then fighting on fight Island as well, it's not really a, a normal debut. So obviously did you, did you have a lot more nerves going in? Cause Normally, you'd have a UFC event where it wouldn't be on Fight Island, so it wouldn't be like massive death, you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? It was, the, the, it was honestly the best, the best debut that I could have possibly had in terms of like how calm I was. Like, yeah. I felt like, I genuinely felt like this is where I'm supposed to be. Like, I visualize it again all the time, the exactly how, like what I'll do, you know, me finishing. And like, you know, even, even like talking to everyone after the fight and stuff like that, like the, the reporters and what I would say, like, so again, the, the visualization is a massive thing to help me in my fights, but it made me like feel very comfortable that I'm like, I know this is going to happen. And like, I, like when it does happen, it's like, this is normal. This is what I'm doing. When I went out there on the UFC canvas and like, you know, everything's like real and like you're walking out and like, you've got the UFC gloves and mm-hmm. you know, all of that, like the whole environment. It just, like I said, it felt like natural. Like this is now the start of the proper, the proper journey, the proper where we're trying to get to the top. You know what I mean? Like we've been climbing to get to the mountain, but now there's another mountain that we've got to climb. And this is like the start of that. And it was amazing just to just sort of go out there and just embrace it and feel good, man. Like I didn't, I had nerves because it's a bloody fight and adrenaline, but it wasn't like nerves. Like, oh my gosh, I've got stage fright. I'm fighting in yeah. front of Dana yeah. White. I was like, nah, I loved it. This is where I'm supposed to be. And I think the more you feel like 
things are supposed to happen like that, the more you go out there and perform. And I think it's only that, like, now I've got, like, sort of the more jittery fight out the way and, the, you know, with the knee and everything. Now I can go out and really show my skill set and just, just go out there and do my thing, man. So, uh, like I say, I, it makes me want to get into a scrap even more and do everything better, you know what I mean, and, and show out my skill set even more. So it was a good starting foundation to what is about to come. Yeah. So obviously, in most of your interviews I've seen you do, you're always saying that you, you're looking for uh, someone to stand up, stand up and fight with you because you've had enough of people trying to take you down and whatever else. So is there anyone in mind for a good fight like that in the UFC? Well, there's something in the works at the minute that I can't spoil to anyone just yet. But if that fight happens... It is going to be an absolute tear up, and I can't wait. Um, that would be like a very, very, like very good fight. Um, another guy that I've mentioned before in terms of who I'd want to fight. Um, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of very high level grapplers out there, but I mean, listen, Roman Delice had a very good debut. Absolutely amazing athlete. Um, you know, he knocked the guy out, and you know, he had a very spectacular performance. Like that's a guy that I would love to go out and compete against, and you know test my stuff and stuff like that he's a very good fighter so you know um i think that would be very interesting and entertaining for the fans as well so you know um but the the, the thing that they have in in store like i said if it happens mate get ready it's going to be explosive so uh yeah man uh everything now i'm just working towards just continuing to build uh on this on this win and have even more crazy finishes more crazy performances and really just show myself out more it's it I say this in every interview. I'm like, oh, this is not, it's only 70% of what I'm doing and this and that. But it's true. Even my dad keeps saying it every time. He's like, you're winning, but you're not, you're not doing what you know you can do. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're winning with, with certain circumstances. Like, you know, I'm not going to put all the blame on the, on the knee because that's not the case. Obviously, I still had to move and do this. And I, I fought a very skilled opponent. But, mm -hmm. mate, there's a lot more that I have to show. People don't know about the wrestling. People don't know about the jiu-jitsu. People don't know even more about the stand-up stuff. So, um, you know, I can't wait to, to, to show, show that all out. I'm, I'm only just getting started. This is me getting warmed up. So, whenever things get really hot, uh, and, and like I say, if, if this next fight happens, then I I'm, I'm definitely feel like fighting the best opponents is what brings the best out of me, and I can't wait to show that. So uh, with your dad having his history in MMA like he does, is it sort of like for him living his living part of his dream through you? Like, as so oh yeah, he he's it's definitely a, a dream that he's living vicariously through me. But I love that. I love mm -hmm. that we can share this experience together, share this moment, share the emotions, share the stage. Like he's fighting in there with me. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, he's there with me. He's, he's not only the coach, but he's there. Everything that we've been doing together, he's experiencing everything just as I am. He's walking out. It's almost like he's fighting at the same time. So I love that. I love that we can have this whole thing together. Like, when I'm winning, he's winning. We're, mm -hmm. we're, we're both doing this together because, like I say, he's living through me and I'm living through him. So this is our dream. You know what I mean? It's not just my dream. This is our dream. And, and you know, we're finally getting there and doing our thing. And, uh, like I say, you know, even he's having interviews with like, you know, the, the Lithuanian uh, uh, TV uh, stations and stuff like that. So I'm very happy. Like I said, mm -hmm. I, I can't wait for my whole team, for all of us to rise together. We, you know, it's, it, it, as much as it's an individual thing, it's a team effort and everyone that's helped me out, we're all going to rise up together because, do you know what I mean? That it, it's with that team that enables me to go out and perform. So at the end of the day, we're all taking a piece of the, piece of the action in the cage all together mm -hmm. so you got your your 50 g's you got it what did you um what did you do with it well uh there's still a bit of like um time before it goes into your account and stuff like that you know okay, they, okay. They, they, they they got to do like a couple of weeks but uh, i'm giving it all to my dad and, and, and my stepmom so i mean listen i've made some good money already just from mm -hmm. that's the most money i've made ever in my life ever in terms of like you know wages just from just from how much i got paid mm -hmm. so the 50 g's i want to give it to them because they need it more than me right now like in terms of being able to pay for like every time like you see and you hear your parents like struggling financially like yeah it's like with me like obviously i know I, uh, like for me i'm sort of thinking shit like i want to i just want to get ready for the next fight so i can make more money and stuff like that just to be able to help myself as well but 
mm-hmm. like for them, I want to help them. Like, do you know what I mean? They, they've been struggling this whole time and I noticed that that's what stresses them out the most the, for the most part. So if I can take away that stress and they can live a bit more comfortably and then they can put, you know, my dad can focus even more on, on, on fighting me, on, on me training and, you know, maybe he doesn't have to teach so much or whatever, or even help my mm-hmm. stepmom and stuff like that. If, we, if I can help them, like, listen, that would mean the world to me. So the first 50 Gs is going to them. Um, and like I said, in the future, it's not like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll then give another, you know, give 50 Gs. It'll be more like we'll, we'll do stuff together. You know, we we'll invest smart and we'll, we'll do stuff together. But the, the, the first big payment is going to go to them because they bloody deserve it. And it's their birthday, so why not? <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to them. Well, like, listen, it's, it's the best present I've ever gotten. I'm like, this whole time I've been, like, giving cards and saying in cards, I'm going to get you this. I'm, Trust me, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And it's like, it's been a year now, it's been two years, and now it's like, finally, I can actually give them something that I've been saying that I'll give to them. Do you know what I mean? And I said it yeah. in, like, I even wrote it on my vision board and stuff like that. And now, like, it's, it's actually happening. It's, it's, it's mad. So the fact that now it's going from dream to reality again is, is, is amazing. So, um, I can't wait. Like 27th of July is, uh, is my ste- stepmom's birthday and then my dad's is going to be on the 21st of August. So that would be like a joint present for them. And uh, by that time, I would have got all the, all, all the funding. So yeah, yeah. that's it. It's going to be a good one, one hell of a birthday for both of them. <laughs> so you've just mentioned your uh, vision board. What's next on there? Well, it was on my – so the stuff about the fight, uh, me winning by finish, winning the 50 bonus and, and stuff like that, winning my debut – um that all happened and that was all great um there was two things that are still left on the board that haven't been ticked off but that's just because they're sort of even more few like more goal like goals that are sort of side like like on the side with you know like you got your main dish your main course and these are like the side dishes yeah. the side dish being i want to have three fights this year i saw kamzat chimay have had an a really quick turnaround like literally 10 days yeah. and uh, you know he had a very good performance and stuff like that and um, you know, I want to be able to get quick turnarounds as well. I want to be able to fight, you know, a lot. So one of them was to have three fights this year and mm-hmm. another was to, to win all three and get free performance bonuses with spectacular finishes. I'm looking to go into fights to finish. I'm not, I'm not going there to take decisions. So I want to give fight fans like entertaining, like, do you know what I mean? Spectacular, <laughs> albeit maybe even controversial, but still I want to give them you know, spectacular performances that they can all think back and like think like, damn, that was crazy. That's what I want to do. So the only way I'm going to, you know, with those sort of performances, there's no way you're not going to get 50 Gs. And that, that's obviously what I'm, what I'm aiming for. And I want to have free fights because I want to stay active. I'm feeling in great shape. I haven't got injuries. The knee's healing up. I'll be back to training on Monday. I'm ready to go back at it again. All right. So um, how often do you sort of update your vision board? Is it sort of a yearly thing or do you just... It's as and when things happen. Yeah. As and when I tick things off, rub it off, put on a new thing. So when my next fight gets announced, that'll be the main part of the board. And I'll, I'll write everything that I want to happen in that fight and stuff like that. Um, and like I say, with giving the 50 Gs to my mum and dad, so I'll probably have to think of something else to go aside from that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like I say, it, it updates as and when things happen. So mm-hmm. things have happened. So I have to rub off those parts on the board. And then I'll just, like I say, transfer and add the new things in there. But the two things that I haven't done are still obviously going to be up there because it just mm-hmm. goes with the same line of what I'm sort of aiming for and what I'm looking to do. So uh, a fan reached out to me yesterday and said that I wanted to ask you how much you love Lithuania and if you would ever do a meet and greet with fans out there. Oh, 100%. 100%. Like, honestly, the every single time I've been there it feels like home mm-hmm. it feels like it feels like I don't know it feels like something from being there when I was you know when I was a lot younger and you know even moving a lot like when I was three years old but like even in those three years that I was there as a like a little kid like you feel there's something about it where you're like this is where I'm su- like sort of this is where this is so properly home this is where I've been supposed to be you know what I mean yeah, you just and you go back there you have like these weird nostalgic sort of vibes and stuff like that and every time I've been back there man it's been amazing and I've been working on you know my language and stuff like that I, I can understand it quite well now now we're just gonna have to work on obviously the, the speaking part to do a little bit better but mm-hmm. of course I would I'm looking to go back there you know after I finish this year out strong and you know 
it's just a case of when I have a bit of free time. Right now, all I'm thinking about is go, go, go. I want to I want to work towards my goals and my dreams and, and train and get better and do things. But, you know, if I have a bit of time, then of, of course, uh, probably next year, I want to go out there and, do, and, yeah, like I say, do a meet and greet with people because I'll be a bit more well-known as well. And, you know, I, I, I can talk to people. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And my, like I said, my Lithuanian language will get a bit better as well. So, a hundred percent there's something I'll look to do. I'm looking to go on holiday there at some point anyways, because the beaches are lovely. Yeah. I, to be honest, I've never heard that much about Lithuania, so I'd, I'm not going to check it out. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, mate. You, you take anyone on a holiday out there, it, it is a definitely a, a short sign for a good time, especially where I was born in Klaipeda. Uh It's actually a very, uh, a very nice town, a uh, very nice city. So um, yeah, definitely, definitely go and check out my man. I will do. All right, sweet. That's all the questions from me then, Modestus. Wicked. Wicked, man. Listen, thank you so much again for having me on, man. It's, no it's always a pleasure talking to you. You too, mate. You too.